Hello garden friends and welcome to my channel DK's Garden Oasis. I am Debbie, a master gardener and butterfly raising hobbyist inspiring you to bloom, grow, and conserve in your garden. Happy Earth Day and what a better way to celebrate Earth Day than to go outside and show you my garden. Right now things are just starting to wake up. My tulips, daffodils, and some other perennials of course, I still have some garden cleanup to do, but I just thought I'd take you on a quick April spring tour of my garden. I will be giving you garden updates every month. As I said, I'm going to be having four areas where I'm going to be gardening. It, they are my own garden, a raised bed garden in a nearby community. I have two of those. I also have an in-ground garden that's near a farm that's around 12 by 12 area that I'll be planting. And then the last one is a cutting garden and I'm going to be planting at a wildflower farm. So I will be showing you all of those in future updates. Make sure you stay till the end where I share an interesting fact about the world's smallest seed. So we've had the craziest week here in the southwest suburbs of Chicago, zone 5B. Last week it ranged from 70s and got up to the 80s by Saturday and then Sunday it turned and got cooler and damp and it was raining all day and on Monday morning woke up to a dusting of snow and brutal winds and the temperature was in the 30s. So quite a drastic change in weather. Last week my poor ranunculus and anemones didn't look so well as it was pretty warm and they don't do well in the warm weather and I didn't have a shade cloth for them. Next year I will probably be doing some hoops so that uh, they can be protected from the weather, whether it's too hot or too cold. But they seem to be bouncing back. The little bit of light dusting with snow didn't bother them. Um, that actually insulates them. So hopefully they will rebound and I will keep you updated on those as well. My daffodils and tulips opened up with the warm weather and once that weather turned they did close up which is good because I want to enjoy the tulips for a little bit longer. I will take you around my garden and show you what's growing and blooming. I do have a video of where I planted the spring blooms and I'll link that above. My grow room is at max capacity so I'm hoping to get out to my cut flower garden next week and plant all my cool flowers like my lysianthus, snapdragons, blue pleurum, and bells of Ireland. So make sure you stay tuned for that video that's coming up. Now let's head outside and take a little tour of my spring garden. <music> garden. This is just some pansies that I put in my planter for spring. And then we have some tulips here. I believe these are the bullseye. They are not quite open yet. We have those. And then we'll go around to the front. Lily. I have a cherry tree, daffodils, hydrangea, tulips. So I have had tulips in the past here and I think that's what these purpley ones are from because last year I know I planted red and white and I believe I see some red, little red ones coming up. These daffodils over here are all what I planted last year and they're naturalizing beautifully. So let's go along and let me show you the tulips that we have so far. So this one hasn't quite opened yet. This is an interesting one and this is, I don't think I planted this last year. I think I did this the year before. Excuse the weeds, have to get to these beds. This purple one right here, I know I didn't plant this last year. So I believe I must have planted it last year. What I did plant are these pinky red ones right here and I planted some white ones. 
exits, which is right here. And then along here, I do have more tulips that are singles and doubles. So let's go along here. Here's a single. Right next to it is a double. That one's pretty, I'm sure that's like a peony type. And I alternated more peony type doubles. A single. Double another hydrangea and another lily and then I have a hibiscus back there another hydrangea and a hydrangea tree and this is along hummingbird lane I have daffodils so last year I had um, some tulips and some daffodils and the only thing that came back are the daffodils so I will be putting more daffodils along this whole uh, bed along this keystone because I do like the way this looks and this will naturalize beautifully next year I'm sure so these are just about flowered opened up and I have all different varieties I know one was a surprise mix and the other ones I have the names of all of them in the video that I linked earlier in this video and so this is a view from the other way. And now let's go to my sunken garden. Okay, before we go to the sunken garden, I wanted to show you this little section here. This is a flowering quince. And it has really pretty poorly red blooms on it in the spring. And then I have some tulips that I might have put in three maybe years ago three four years ago and this daffodil has been here a while and I have some lilies that will come up after the tulips so let's go around then to my sunken garden and last week when it was nice I did some weeding and put fresh mulch down I still have that section along there I did get to my trumpet vine I did clean that up and I did trim a few of the rose of Sharon I did not get to my butterfly garden that is where I'm going to be putting some natives in and I have cone flower there so back to this section this is where I planted some tulips last fall these have been here um, two years now so they came back this is the second year and they're like pink and white this butterfly bush will be the last to bloom I trimmed it up a little bit then in the back here I have a smoke bush Rosa Sharon and then here are some tulips that look like they're chewed up pretty good from the bunnies that I planted last year this I'm going to step back is a service berry in full bloom and then it gets berries after this in like I would say May June and the birds like that and I do have some poppies that are going to be coming up along that little fence there so we'll see if they make it this year I know the bunnies ate them last year more Rosa Sharon and then I have a seven flower bush or tree I'm not sure what it might be called I think it is actually a tree and then behind that I have a nine bark and behind that I have a maple that's getting quite tall and this is a tree peony right here that should be in bloom pretty soon some allium I have some lilies through here this in another month will be sprouted all it, you're not going to believe the difference in another month the bee balm goes crazy and the trumpet vine that I pruned back pretty hard is starting to come back so that's good I may be putting out my bulk oriole jelly and my hummingbird water today I usually do it two weeks before I usually see them and I usually do see them 
around the end of April, beginning of May. This is another peony. This little slab I put a little fountain, so that'll be up in the next month. And then I have some more rows of Sharon that I want to prune so they're all about the same size. And this is my butterfly garden that I have natives. This is rue that's coming back. And then they're intermixed. There's a bunch of different clone flowers in here. But I do want to clean this up and put more mulch. So that's it for my sunken garden. And this will be a drastic difference in about a month the next time I show you. So that is it for my sunken garden. Um, these are my four raised beds and I have asparagus. The next one I have is garlic, hopefully. The other two were supposed to have tulips, but I think the squirrels got a hold of it because they should be up by now. This is all my winter sowing that I did. Make sure you check out that video where I planted all of these and most of them have little sprouts. Let me just kind of do a close up here. So there's lots of little sprouts. Some of them don't, but I'm sure once it gets warmer, they will be all sprouting. Um, most of the milk jugs have some growth in it. So now I will show you the crab apple. It's not quite in bloom, so maybe next week I can show you. It's really pretty when this is all white, but it doesn't last long. So I have lots of lilies here, pastas, hellebores, more lilies. There's a peony right here. This is an almond tree. And so I have, let me go around here. I have a few more tulips here in the front. And I'm gonna put some baby's breath in front here. Here is my little grape hyacinths and snowdrops. I love the snowdrops. This, I believe, over here was my snowdrops, but they don't have the flowers yet. But maybe that will happen next year, because I know I planted one on either side. And again, I apologize for the uh, bed being not weeded. We have some dandelions growing in there, but that's okay. The bees will like that. But I will get to the this bed in the next couple weeks, and it'll be all cleaned up the next time you see it. And this is the last of my magnolia tree. Let me kind of go back here. This is my magnolia tree. And so yeah, that's my quick spring tour. Things are just starting to pop up. And they will be pretty full here in another month. This will not look like this in another month. Everything should be filled in. So thanks for watching. seeing my first 
video of my gardens. So make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell for those future videos where I will be giving you updates monthly. And make sure you follow along. I do do some sh YouTube short videos where I post a quick video of what's blooming and growing in my garden. So make sure you check that out as well. Please like and comment below if you're experiencing spring weather or if you're still in winter like some of us are. In my next video, I will show you my seedlings and the progress of those. I'll also be planting some warm season annuals and also showing you my dahlias and they've started to sprout and I'd like to take some cuttings of those as well. Now I'd like to share that interesting fact about the world's smallest seed. for watching and happy gardening. Happy Earth Day. Bye-bye.